Hey guys, happy water day! That's right, it's March 22nd. Yep, March 22nd. Happy water day. Let's get technical. Over 70% of our Earth is water, and that gives us a great reason to celebrate this day. Matter of fact, 96.5% of all water on Earth is stored in our oceans, and the other 3.5% is found in large bodies of water or frozen in icebergs and glaciers. Speaking of frozen, let it go! Let it go! Yeah, that is nothing that relates to what we're doing right now, huh? No, it didn't didn't think so. When you are born, you are 78% water. You're just a big sack of water. And when you are one year old, you already lose over 10% of your water. You are 65% water at age one. Now, you are 60% water when you are an adult. Man. If you're a woman, you only are 55% water because women have more fat than tissue. And tissue contains more water than fat. Now, you probably already know that water is two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. But what you probably don't already know is that the oxygen molecule is the negative molecule. And the hydrogen molecule is the positive molecule. Now, these positive and negatives can cause the water to stick together or make bonds, which can lead to some pretty interesting stuff that I'll probably go into at another time. Matter of fact, more substances can be dissolved in water than any other liquid on Earth ever created, ever found. And that includes the world's most powerful acid, so that's pretty impressive. A famous guy in the world of water is Henry Carvendish. I don't think I can ever say his name correctly, but I think I just did. And he found out that water was one part oxygen, two parts hydrogen. Because before then, around his time, people thought that water was its own element. It was not a compound. It was its own element. One of my favorite facts about water is that hot water freezes faster than cold water. What? This is called the... I'm sorry, I'm looking at... I'm looking at this. I don't know how to say it. It's called... I'm gonna... I'm gonna put, like, the word right here. Mpemba effect. Huh. Now, there are many theories why this is true, but one theory is that heating the water up removes all of the dissolved gas in the water. Now, less dissolved stuff in the water makes it easier to freeze. This is also the reason why we put salt on ice to melt it. It's because the salt dissolves into the water, adding more stuff to the water, making it harder for the water to freeze. Long story short, we don't really have any idea why this is true, because there are so many variables that could be involved with this. Should it be the same mass or the same volume? Should we use the same freezer? And when we take the hot water to and from the freezer, wouldn't it evaporate and lose mass dash volume and also lose heat? So we really don't have any accurate way of containing all the variables. So that's where we are in science today. Now back to some water stance. One billion, that's one seventh of the population, one billion people do not have access to clean water. One billion, that is a huge number. Like I said before, that's one seventh of the population. What's going on with that, man? What's going on with that? If we can go, okay, glass, Google what's the time, and come up with the time, and we can't just go, there's water, what's wrong with us? Oh, hey, it's 3.30, oh no. This is why organizations such as Water.org and Students Rebuild have a plan to get clean water. A matter of fact, if you make these really cool paper bead things and send them in to Students Rebuild, every 20 beads, they will give one family in a village clean water. You can go to their website to find out more. I, I highly recommend you do. Link in the description. Okay, so obviously water is something to celebrate about, but how did water get here in the first place? I mean, everyone knows of the Big Bang and all this stuff, but it just doesn't make sense. All of our history says Earth should be dry, so how did our water get to our Earth in the first place? Well, the way our solar system formed is a collapse of a large cloud of dust and gas. A dense bunch of gas in the center created and made us star. 
called our sun. This uncontrollable, excited star, ooh, it's so excited, let out giant, intense solar winds, which were mainly made of electrons and protons. Over time, these solar winds pushed the gas particles and the dust particles away from our solar system, which left the hard stuff, which formed together to make planetesimals, which then made planets. And ice couldn't have stuck around because it was way too hot. And water vapor couldn't have been there because the solar winds would have just pushed them away. So where does water come from? This is getting me nowhere! Well, we expect water to come in from meteors or comets flying in from places cold enough where water can survive. Comets are a logical contestant because they contain water, but are ruled out because they have way too much heavy hydrogen. Dude, from technicality, I don't know what heavy hydrogen is and I don't really care. Okay, well, it's bad that you don't care, but heavy hydrogen contains a neutron and a proton. And for every million hydrogen atoms in Earth water, about 150 of them are heavy hydrogen atoms, while comet water has about twice that much. This means Earth water did not come from comets, we know that for sure. The most likely source of water is the carbonaceous chondrite. Chondrite is a fancy term for big chunk of rock that falls down to Earth frequently. Okay, so by definition, these chondrites come to Earth frequently. But what is special about the carbonaceous chondrite is that it actually contains water with the same amount of heavy hydrogen as Earth water does. So there you go, that's most likely where our water on Earth comes from. Let's end this day by doing this fun water experiment that you can do, and it's not going to be one of those things that, yeah, I totally did not nail that entrance. Whatever, let's do a fun water experiment involving awesomeness. Okay, time to start the experiment. Wait a second. Time to clean up in here. Okay, that's better. Now let's get on with the experiment. Step one is to weigh yourself. So before you shower, you're gonna weigh yourself. Let's take a look at what I weigh. One seventeen point six. One seventeen point six. Okay, so now you're gonna go ahead and take the shower. Here's a fun fact: if you put on a water-saving faucet and cut down your shower time by a minute, you'll save one thousand five hundred gallons per month. That is a ton. Anyways, after you're done showering, get out immediately and do not dry off. Okay, so I've just showered. Let's step on this again. See what my weight shall be. Camera's getting wet. 118.2, 118.2, that's a little bit higher. Now dry off as much as you can and re-weigh yourself. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to come onto the scale again after you dried. it. 118.0, 118.0. So as you can see, there are the different levels and you could be really dry or kind of dry. Maybe you need to get more dry. I don't know. It's just an interesting experiment. Try it yourself. And as always, get ready, get out, and be awesome.